I started off my summer with the extra credits game jam, and now I'm ending my summer with a GMTK game jam, which was a 48 hour long jam hosted by the Game Makers Toolkit YouTube channel that took place last weekend. In this video, I'm going to explain how I made the only outlaw, my entry for the jam, in the Unity game engine. GMTK always comes up with the best themes for their jams, so I was really looking forward to participating this year. But when the jam began and the theme was revealed to be only one, I was stumped. Most of my ideas were either too unoriginal, too vague, too ambitious, or just wouldn't make for fun games. About an hour into the jam, I still didn't have an idea, but after a ton of brainstorming, a phrase came into my mind. The only one in a crowd. This caused me to remember a minigame from Super Mario 64 DS called Wanted, where you have a limited amount of time to find a specific character in a crowd. I thought it would be really fun to make a game similar to this, and since there was only one specific person you had to find, it fit pretty well with the theme. I started off by creating a simple crosshair sprite and making it follow the mouse cursor. I gave the crosshair a 2D kinematic rigid body and box collider and set that to be a trigger. Then I created a target with a placeholder sprite and gave it a 2D box collider as well. I made a script that would spawn the target at a random position on startup, and if you clicked the mouse while the crosshair was touching the target, the target would be destroyed and respawned at a new position. I also spawned a certain number of extra characters depending on the value of an integer called population size, and destroyed and respawned them when the target was located as well. By this point, I had a pretty good prototype of the gameplay, so I started working on the sprites for the different characters. I separated each part of the characters so I could animate them inside of Unity. I made a simple animation for when the characters spawn in an idle animation. Since each character was made up of multiple sprites, the sorting layers were pretty messed up when they overlapped. So to fix this, I made a simple script that changes the sorting layer of each sprite depending on the character's Y position. By then it was getting late, so I decided to go to bed and continue working on Saturday. I got up Saturday morning and started working on a system that changes the target shirt to a random color after it spawned, and after spawning the additional characters, changes their shirt colors to any color that isn't the target shirt color. The shirts could be one of four colors, red, blue, green, or yellow. This worked pretty well, so I moved on to the UI. I found a cool font that I thought fit with the game's aesthetic pretty well, and made a wanted poster that would show you the character you're currently looking for. To do this, I simply set the color of the shirt UI image to the color of the spawn target shirt every time the target respawned. After that, I made a box that would display how much time you had left, and a box that would display your current amount of kills. I made a simple death screen for when the timer reached zero that let you retry or exit to a main menu that didn't exist yet. At this point, I had a playable game, but it was obviously missing a lot that could make it better. For one thing, I wanted to make shooting feel more satisfying, so I started by creating an animation for the crosshair when hovering over a character. I also added a bit of screen shake and a sound effect when shooting, which made everything feel a lot nicer. Another thing I had to address was that, as of now, the game had no difficulty curve. Every round was exactly the same, which made the game pretty boring, so I decided that I wanted to make the target harder to find as you progress. I started off by increasing the population size by 20 each time you spotted the target. I obviously couldn't increase the population size forever though, so I capped it at 200. Another thing that I thought would be cool would be to make characters move after a certain amount of rounds, so I created a basic movement system for the characters that activated once the population size reached 100. And once the population size reached 200, I made the room go dark by using sprite masks, which definitely added some much needed challenge. After getting 5 more kills, I made the visible area in the dark room smaller to make it even harder. The last thing I wanted to do was tweak the timer. As cool as it would be to have the game last for only one minute, I felt like that was too short, so instead I made the timer start with 5 seconds and increase by 5 every time you shot the target. And if you missed or shot the wrong character, it would decrease by 5. 
To indicate that this was happening, I created little pop-ups that said plus 5 and minus 5 that would appear near your cursor when gaining or losing 5 seconds. At this point I was getting pretty tired and as much as I wanted to keep working, I decided to get some sleep and wake up early on Sunday to finish things up. The first thing I did Sunday was attempt to create music for the game, but I couldn't come up with anything that I thought fit the game well. Luckily, in this jam you're allowed to use any music that you have the legal right to use, so I looked around and found a free to use track that I really liked and decided to use it. After that I quickly implemented a high score system that tracked and displayed your highest amount of kills using player prefs. Then I finally made a main menu, and I also customized the default Unity splash screen. With that, I was finally finished and was able to upload my game to itch.io right before its servers went down because of the huge amount of games being uploaded for the jam. If you want to check out The Only Outlaw, you can find the link to its itch.io page in the description. I had a lot of fun making this game and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. A few issues with the game have been brought to my attention though. First of all, this game is pretty much impossible for people with colorblindness. This is something I completely overlooked while working on the game. But in hindsight, I should have definitely added more distinction between characters other than shirt color. People have also come across a bug in the first few rounds where the target will spawn almost completely behind another character, making it impossible to know if he's the target without guessing. This isn't a game breaking issue, but if it happens to you the first time you play, it definitely leaves a pretty bad first impression. So yeah, these are things I'll definitely take note of in my future projects. Make sure your game can be played with a grayscale filter, and don't ever stop playtesting, ever, because there's probably a lot of bugs. So I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something from it, and if you have any feedback or suggestions for future content, feel free to let me know in the comments. Before I wrap things up, I do want to mention that I got a new microphone, so hopefully you've noticed an improvement with the audio quality in this video. And I also want to thank you guys for 100 subscribers. I know it isn't much but it's still a milestone that I'm happy to have finally reached. And with that, that is all, so thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.